Good morning. Hi, my name is Rajesh Ravastav. I joined together uh, today uh, from RSR Global in the UK. Uh, we have with us today Monica uh, Pia Hulshka. Uh, she is the SVA Director of uh, RSR Global based in Poland. Uh, the objective of us meeting today is uh, for Monica to talk us through on the different opportunities for students coming from India and other part of the world to study in Poland. Uh, this session is recorded. Uh, it's also been live streamed and uh, uh, you'll all have a request you all to please mute your microphone. You can put your questions on the chat line. Uh, without uh, waiting for further ado, I would like to invite Monica uh, to please uh, uh, introduce herself and uh, talk us through on the different opportunities for people to study in Poland. And uh, followed by, uh, we'll have a question and answer session. The total duration of the session is uh, 50 minutes, uh, which will include the uh, 25 minutes of presentation and uh, 25 minutes of uh, question and answer session. So uh, Monica, uh, over to you, ma'am. Uh, hello, my name is Monika Pichulska. Uh, I will be looking after uh, admissions to Polish universities and I would like to show you some presentation of uh, on uh, our uh, universities. Let me share the screen. Okay. So why Poland? Poland has the eighth largest economy in the European Union and one of its most dynamic ones. Universities follow the objectives and the standards set by Polonia process. Therefore, the degrees earned in Poland are widely recognized internationally. In 2019, more than 72,000 foreign students from 170 countries studied in Poland. And this number is raising um, constantly. Students from India rank third in the list of foreign students studying in Poland. Uh, mentoring programs and senior student networks in at Polish universities help newly arrived students adapt quickly to living and studying in Poland. Living in Poland is much cheaper compared to other European countries, about 50% less than most other European cities. Living costs for international students vary between 350, 550 euros per month. In larger cities, it's more expensive. It's between 500 and 850 euros. Uh, dormitories available on universities price ranges from 75 up to 120 euros per month. You will have to apply additionally for place in student house after being admitted to university. Food for, any inter for an international student usually costs 150 to 100 euros per month. Public transport is the main option for students who pay 50 euros for semester pass, which is available for six months. Utilities like electricity, heating, water, garbage have total prices around 160 per month for, for example, 85 square meters shared apartment. In Poland, there are 59 public universities and 30 higher vocational schools under control of the Ministry of Science and Higher Education. Study cycles in Poland. Uh, first study cycle is three, four years Bachelor of Art, Science or Professional Degree of Engineer. Second study cycle is one and a half year up to two years master degree long cycle studies five six years master degree and they following just uh, medicine medical analysis veterinary performing arts art <clears throat> conservation and, and restoration dental medicine pharmacy psychology law and 
photography. And third study cycle leads to a PhD degree. University in Poland open admission in the month of April each year. And deadline for application is uh, July. Admission for universities requirements. Language. For programs uh, delivered in English, most universities in Poland require at least 72 in TOF IBT, 5.5 in IELTS, or B2 level in other documents than, that can certify your English proficiency. <clears throat> Certificates. In order to study in Poland, you must have completed a secondary level education and be in possession of a living certificate that confirms that you are eligible to apply for university. Uh, you need to provide a high school transcript of grades. All educational documents need to be legalized by Polish consulate or apostille in the country of issue. All educational documents need to be translated into English or Polish language by a sworn translator. Legalization. Original certificate or its duplicate needs to be legalized by Polish consul in the country where the certificate was issued or in the country in which educational system uh, school operates. Apostille. If the country in uh, uh, which the document was issued is a party to the Convention Hague, the legalization of the document in, in this country is replaced by the apostille clause attached to the document. If your country accepts the apostille as a form of international document, legalization your degree must be certified by the signed competent authorities. And recognition by recognition by the power of law, of law. <laughs> Sorry. These certificates are not subject to the recognition procedure in a Polish office. Uh, they may be submitted directly to the university, and it applies to um, member state of the European Union, member state of the. Uh, organization for economic CO operation and development and a member state of the European Free Trade Association. And below there are countries uh, that can apply directly to the university. A registration fee, it's approximately 20 euros and 34 euros for candidates who apply for studies that require a test of artistic talents. Visa information, if you plan to stay in Poland for more than 90 days, you must apply for a long-term national, uh, Polish national visa marked uh, symbol D. Temporary residence permit. You should apply for the temporary residence card immediately upon arrival in Poland and um, not wait for its expiry as it generally takes eight to 12 months for the temporary residence card to be approved. These are financial requirements. If the student has not purchased the return ticket, the amount of 581 euros is required, adding the number of the monetary funds required for the Poland student visa are 2,814 euros a year. Medical insurance for EU citizens, a valid passport, student identity card or doctorate student identity card 
and a valid, Euro valid European health insurance card entitles its holder to medical care services free of charge in Poland. Those who fail to present any of the documents will be obliged to cover the costs of medical help. Students need to apply for ECUs in their home country. Students from outside of the EU uh, are obliged to have an insurance during the whole duration of their stay in Poland. Otherwise, students are required to pay for any health service they get. They are required to sign a voluntary health insurance agreement with the National Health Fund, NFZ, in Poland, and pay their own insurance fees. The cost is around 15 euros a month. Then students are entitled to free medical care. Tuition fees for bachelor and master degrees in Polish universities vary from 200 up to six, uh, 2,000 up to 6,000 euros per year. And it depends on the university and program and prestige of uni university. Best programs in Polish universities as, uh, are astronomy, chemistry, theoretical, physics, computer science, administration of international organizations, journalism and social communication, spatial economy, managerial economics, psychology, sociology, international relations, law, global communication, economy, finance and, uh, finance and uh, accounting, management, bio biotechnology, environmental protection, Landscape, um, landscape architecture, dietetics, agricultural and forestry, directions on nutrition and food, veterinary and zootechnology. Medical studies in Poland. MBBS education in Poland is of six years with one year of compulsory internship most of the MBBS universities in Poland have tie-ups with other universities abroad. Those the students get to learn jobs and internship in other foreign countries. Indian students must qualify NEET exam to land a seat in the best Polish medical colleges. ST, ST and OBC students can qualify with passing marks with 40% in NEET exam. The Indian student can easily clear MCI screening test after graduating from Polish universities. Indian students applying for MBBS Poland are not required to take IELTS top exam. Top 10 medical colleges in Poland are recognized by the best medical institutes and councils in the world, including Medical Council of, Council of India, and are also acknowledged by the World Health Organization. Main divisions in medical universities are medicine, six year course, dentistry, five years course, pharmacy, four to 5.5 years course, nursing, three years. And below there are uh, university tuition fees per year. And it really depends on the prestige on the university, like Jagiellonian University in Krakow. It's 14 euros, 40,000 14, euros per year. The same Warsaw Medical Academy. There are, those are the most popular and most prestigious ones and the most expensive. Eligibility criteria to study MBBS. On the science stream, students can study MBBS in Poland. Students should have passed 10 plus 2, physic, chemistry, and biology from any recognized board of India or abroad. 
minimum 50% aggregate of PCB combined. Eligibility for admission is 75% in PCB and a need for Indian students. IELTS at least 6.5 points. TOF, IBT at least 87 points. And at least 3.5 points from the written work of the TWE, TOF, PBT, every at least 510 points from the test at least 180 points in the computer system or equivalent. Entrance exam in English in biology and chemistry in most universities and interviews based on English language proficiency, uh, checking your motivation and predisposition for medical profession and the knowledge of selected subjects. most popular technical programs in Polish universities are automatic and robotics, architecture, biotechnology, construction electronics and telecommunication electrotechnics, power engineering, technical physics, applied physics, geodesy and cartography, mining and geology, environmental and land engineering, mechatronics, chemical technology, transport aviation and cosmonautic, management and production engineering, mechanical engineering, biochemical engineering, material engineering, mechanics and machine design, and civil engineering. Eligibility criteria for uh, technical universities if a student wish to go for graduate level engineering course, should have passed 10 plus two physics, chemistry and math from any recognized board of India or abroad and have over five, uh, five, sorry, over 50% marks. A good score B2 level in entrance exam like TOF, SAT, GRE, GMAT, IELTS is required. Students should have strong academic background. And here are some technical university's tuition fees. And the most popular and most prestigious again are Warsaw, Krakow, and uh, Gdańsk, University of Technology. Okay, that would be all. Thank you, Monica. If you'd like to uh, take the uh, stop the share of the screen, uh, okay. then a few questions have okay. come through and I wanted to uh, pass on to this. Uh, it's a very good presentation. Thank you, Monica, for talking us through on Poland. And from the few uh, notes which I've taken down while uh, you were making the presentation was uh, there are 72,000 students uh, who come to study from 170 countries in the yeah. world in Poland to study. Uh, third most number of students come from uh, Poland, India. Uh, from India, India. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of applications are uh, inquiries are going on from uh, Somalia, Nigeria, and other part of Africa who wants to come and uh, study in uh, Poland. I would imagine the main reason would be because they want to come and study there and settle down. Uh, another thing which I noticed, which was uh, very nice, and thank you for pointing it out, uh, uh, that the students who come from uh, India, uh, if they have uh, X amount of uh, score in physics, chemistry, biology in the year 12 of their studies, uh, and obviously they have studied in English, it's become easier for them to come in down there. 
and the medical fees uh, uh, fees for medical university is about 9000 euros uh, compared to four and a half thousand uh, for engineering so still if you look at it uh, a euro is very much similar to a value in pound it's not much different uh, it, so it's more or less the same thing but i have some questions which are coming through uh, for me uh, for me to pass on to you and uh, if i if you don't mind uh, the first question which comes from monica is uh, which is the most popular course for people to study in uh, poland uh, is uh, polish university is known for engineering or medical or uh, what is the most uh, popular ones well the most popular are uh, general engineering studies okay. in poland and um, very popular is uh, it and um, computer sciences in Poland and uh, pharmacology becomes more and more popular in Poland as well. That's very nice. That's very mm -hmm. nice. So that makes a lot of sense because uh, the fees which uh, the universities are charging in uh, Poland and I looked at it uh, apart from uh, university in Warsaw, which was a little bit expensive and one more was well, a bit expensive. Yeah, uh, some of them are actually half of what they're charging of uh, one of them was 1600 euros as well. Uh, and uh, the living cost in Poland is uh, very low compared to people who are studying in England or other parts of the country, uh, Europe. So it, it gives an opportunity. The biggest opportunity for them, I imagine, is uh, because they study in Poland, uh, they have the right to work anywhere in uh, Europe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Monica. Yes, uh, mm, Polish diploma is internationally recognized due to Poland's involvement in the Bologna process. So you can go everywhere in Europe and your diploma will be recognized and you uh, won't have any problems. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question which comes to uh, Monica, uh, like when they come from India or other part of the world, obviously they will not know Polish. So will the mode of study or will be in English or uh, how will they study? Uh, well, I showed you studies uh, in English language only. Okay. There are English language, uh, proficiency English language and uh, there is no Polish. Of course, you can take Polish courses as well. It's even better for you to understand some Polish uh, words. But uh, in universities and uh, Polish people, they can really speak English on quite high level. Everywhere you go in shops, in institutes, institutions, uh, they speak English. So it's not a problem. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, question comes through, uh, Monica. Uh, uh, do students get a post-study work visa, like they want to stay back and live uh, and study? You know, uh, they want mm -hmm. to work in the country. Like when people come to UK, uh, they study for so many years, and uh, then uh, they get a right to live and work here. You know, for mm -hmm. two years or something. I think the rules are changing even further. Uh, is there something like that in Poland as well? Well, students who finish their graduation in Poland, they are allowed uh, to work in Poland without work permission. Um, therefore, if uh, they are able to find a job, uh, then, then they can apply for temporary residence card. <clears throat> um, but in case you are not able to find any job in Poland, uh, you unfortunately uh, have to go back to your country. That's very kind. That's very kind because uh, I think uh, it justifies your answer as well. A uh, very good friend of mine, uh, Sam, uh, yeah. he, he works for uh, Bugatti <coughs> and yeah. uh, his uh, factory is in mm. uh, Germany. Uh, when he uh, moved, uh, he lived on a border of Germany and Poland. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he's married now uh, to someone from Poland, uh, but uh, he still travels to Germany to work and comes back to Poland in the evening. Uh, because of European Union, uh, uh, you don't have any restriction on movement. 
uh, you can live in one country and work in another country. That's not an issue at all. So mm -hmm. a lot of people yes. do that. Even in UK, a lot of people, they <clears throat> fly out from UK in the morning. They go to wherever they have to work in uh, Europe and they come back in the evening. Sometimes they stay for the week and they come back on Friday. But a lot of people, uh, they travel up and down every day. Uh, another question which comes to uh, Monica, uh, which is when students come here uh, to Poland and they have a visa to uh, study, uh, if they want to bring their partners or dependents, can they come as well? Yes, they can and they can uh, work, but I don't know what documents you need to um, have for, for permission to work. So I will have to find out, but yes, yes they can arrive and they can even work in here. Okay, that's very kind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one more thing, obviously, this is to do with the in insurance and uh, uh, people who are coming from India, uh, we cover our students uh, with insurance from uh, five key uh, insurance providers, including Tata, AIG and everything else. And uh, a key partner in India is uh, one insurer uh, you will hear more from them. Uh, they provide a very good work to go abroad uh, for employment for six months and uh, for studies for as long as they're studying. Uh, and in case of any eventuality, in case of anything going wrong, uh, this uh, insurance looks after them. Uh, if, for example, at the moment with the coronavirus ongoing situation, a lot of students had to fly back home because uh, the universities were uh, doing online lessons and things like that. So to fly them out, uh, these students uh, had to buy tickets. Uh, and uh, I think the insurance, uh, those who were covered by Taita AIG and other insurance, uh, ensured that uh, this is covered up. So this was something. But is, is there a, a other local insurance as well for people? Uh, I'm sure there must be something, isn't it, Monica? Yes, even universities can offer uh, insurance. So. Uh, this is, you know, depending on the university and you will have to find out on a university website, but yeah, even university offers you uh, insurance. Okay, that's directly. very, very kind. Yeah. That's very kind, very kind. And uh, one last thing uh, was insurance. What sort of, is there, uh, sorry, on scholarships. Uh, are there scholarships available for people to study? In uh, yes, I can even share with you a screen if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, hold on a second, Nava Poland scholarships. Okay, I will share the screen with you. And this is NAVA Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange. And here are programs for scholarships for students from abroad. So as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, four. Uh, at the moment, there are four programs running for scholarships. That's very kind. There's one advantage for people who study in Poland, uh, the course fees are very competitive uh, compared to what they pay in Ukraine. Uh, advantage uh, for Poland, uh, it's, uh, it's a part of European Union. So uh, people who come and study and uh, live in Poland, uh, the cost of uh, living or studying is not very different than what you would uh, someone would pay in uh, Ukraine. Uh, but uh, it's a part of European Union against uh, U Ukrainian universities, uh, which is part of uh, European Economic Association. So slight difference. Uh, the structure of European Union will change. We never know. But for the moment, uh, uh, this is one of the reasons why people come and st uh, study here and uh, live here in Poland and then travel abroad. Uh, well, one yes, question. It, uh, sorry, it go on. It opens your uh, gates for, for, for uh, European Union to, to work after graduation. 
That's very nice. That's very kind. Uh, Monica, the question has come through. Uh, this yeah, visa yeah. process, obviously, uh, I suppose uh, uh, the process uh, for admission to Poland University would be something similar to any other university across the world. When people come and study in UK, they get a CAS letter. And same thing would be happening in Ukraine and everything else. Uh, normally, uh, the procedure is uh, you find a course, you apply for a course, uh, and then uh, the university says, yes, uh, you have the right kind of funds and right kind of qualification, and we're happy to offer you admission. Uh, there's something uh, uh, at one point in time, I would like uh, Mr. Rajesh to talk to us on a postal, but uh, the documents are verified by the, high, uh, the embassy of uh, uh, Poland uh, in uh, wherever you uh, are based in India or whichever part of the world and uh, then they get an offer letter and they come here. Uh, normally visa process from India takes about uh, four weeks Rajesh or uh, how long does it take? Uh, Poland visa do take normally two months uh, you know, uh, from the time of application to you no know, I think uh, but uh, um, the, the paperwork they need to have cash and obviously a postal of all the certificates which takes longer mm -hmm. time a postal takes around uh, no 15 to 20 days uh, average uh, so the documents need to be prepared beforehand before you apply as uh, normally probably you no know, they don't give you extra time and if you don't have your proper document obviously they'll give you an, uh, another time to pro show your documents so before you go you need to have documents uh, properly in hand uh, I think the challenge here, rest document, travel documents are not the challenge. The a postal is the challenge, which has to be get done. Uh, it takes 15 to 20 days because it's a government uh, process. Mm, that's very good. And uh, one question mm. I would like to ask Monica, or probably I would like to ask Mr. Mishra. Uh, sir, when they fly to uh, students, do they buy one way ticket or they buy two way tickets, sir? Your uh, microphone is switched off, uh, Mr. Mishra. It depends on the student, but they are allowed. See, uh, uh, unless you have a long stay visa, you cannot buy one way ticket. This is a rule of the airline. So in this case, in case of a student, they have the option of buying one way or return. It depends on the price value. You see, normally uh, return tickets are 1.25%, uh, 1.5% 1 1 of the one way value. So sometimes people buy return, sometimes people go on one way. It depends on the person who wants to buy which kind of a ticket. But they have they are allowed to buy one way ticket because they have a long stay visa. And while on you on the on the mic uh, on the system, Mr. Mishra, uh, Polish uh, like in India, Polish in, uh, embassy is it only in uh, Delhi or they have multiple sites, Bombay and all other as well? I like to find out. Uh, Huh? No, at, at this moment of time, it's in only Delhi. Yeah, yes. At this moment of time, it's only in Delhi. It's not there in Mumbai. Uh, if it's not in Mumbai, I don't think it's there in South also. It cannot be, yes. Yeah, it's only in there, no, Delhi as of now. But, yes. but normally, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's a VFS which does this thing, isn't it? Uh, they don't have to go to embassy VFS nowadays. Is, embassy means VFS. VFS must be in Delhi only then. Otherwise, because Visa Application Center. If there is a Visa Application Center, uh, they will forward it to uh, the embassy. So this must be in visa. Let's see, visa VFS is a body which helps all the embassy. It's a private body. This has nothing to do with the embassy. Embassy is a government body. Visa Facilitating Services is a company uh, which started around 15, 20 years back by a gentleman uh, for facilitating US visa. And then he started getting into UK and other visas. So it's a private body and they basically work in most of the embassies which have, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, in between, they were not there for Ukraine. Now they got Ukraine also. Uh, or Poland, they already have with them. Uh, the, uh, there are a few, Czech Republic is still not there. There are some countries which they are still not have. Uh, gradually, it is getting added, expanded. Gradually, they are going. So, VFS, uh, doc, they are facilitating uh, services. They help us, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they help us in getting the documents and reaching. So, yes, you to answer your question, you do not have to go to submit the document. But in case if you are given an appointment, you may need to be present and visa facilitating services uh, you know, gives you the appointment as well. So what we're trying to say is VFS is basically a private organization which works with embassies of different countries. All, all, and yes. uh, I'm sure there must be many VFS offices in India and there will be no, literally no, no. every big city would have it. 
exactly in in they have it in most of the cities in india so hyderabad mumbai chennai they have the drop box facility wherein all the documents are gone they check they verify the document if there is anything short they you know they basically help you to put to, to help you to you know get the visa any document which is short fall they help the embassies so rest assured you know the before your application goes all documents are intact All right, that's very very nice. And uh, Rajesh, would you like to just talk a little bit more on our apostle? What exactly is apostle? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll just quickly give a couple of things on the apostle. Apostle, obviously, as uh, Monica has said, uh, no, uh, said that it is required for every education. Um, since apostle, um, uh, it's uh, one apostle is valid for all the country. So if you do apostolation, not for every country, you don't. You can valid. If, you can use it for any other country as well. Basically, apostle because most of the universities is in tenth. and 12 passing certificates all over india all over india are in various language you no know, there will be uh, no vernacular language which will be used in it not necessarily all the certificates are in english and that is the reason the apostle was made to say the you uh, know verify the document once the document is verified this is uh, this is done by mh ministry of home uh, and external affairs uh, it's a it's a government process wherein you need to send your original documents which are verified uh, along with a copy along with a letter uh, you know of a, of a lawyer uh, who will assist you to get the uh, you know asset attestation uh, once this is done uh, the documents the original documents and the other documents are sent back to you uh, and And this is this process uh, has uh, can only be done by speed post, so it does take time. So it takes around fifteen to twenty days minimum uh, to send it. The best way to do it is get a lawyer who can do it from Delhi, uh, so that you send the documents to Delhi, and from Delhi he does all the uh, necessary paperwork and sends it because it's easy to get document in Delhi itself rather than you no know, sending it all over uh, India. a uh, second question which just to answer uh, about the return flight which you said uh, in fact monica has also mentioned if you do not have return flight you need a extra bank guarantee to be kept uh, yes. in your bank uh, to cover your expenses return flight so uh, no um, any which way it is uh, no helpful uh, to as a resource to uh, to the to the applicants so either you buy a return flight uh, you're not sure which did open return flight uh, or probably you can have a, a blocked amount which is much uh, easier and yeah, that's very nice thank you very much uh, one question which we have uh, and i uh, if you like to answer on that monica that's on bologna process what is bologna process um hold on a second I need to support myself a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bologna process is a um, series of ministerial meetings and agreements between European countries to ensure. Uh, compa comparability in the standards and quality of higher education qualifications so it means uh, wherever you go in uh, european union uh, or countries which are with bologna in bologna process uh, your documents are recognized and uh, it's easier to to um, to um, to process with uh, your uh, documents okay that sounds very good uh, basically it is like uh, uh, when uh, we moved to uk many many years ago mm -hmm. and uh, my wife's uh, after a while when she started working uh, we had to get a, 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 a sort of a certificate from an organization i don't know the name i forgot now uh, but where it says 
my wife's uh, BSc was UK BSc. My wife's uh, master science was uh, UK's master science, and my wife's PhD was UK PhD. So they had to do some sort of a, uh, a testation. Uh, to make sure that it's the same thing. And then it became applicable that it, the qualification in India uh, is same as uh, qualification is here. So I think that is what uh, Bologna process is also. And uh, that gives an opportunity for people who have done a, a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD from UK, uh, from Poland, uh, to be recognized by any other uh, places in Europe. Now, one good advantage is though the cost of living uh, cost of studies are low in Poland, and which attracts, uh, as Monica said, 70,000 students every year from 170 countries. Uh, mind it, there were just about 203 uh, or 204 countries in the world. If 170 countries are sending students, so it is well recognized. Uh, the cost of studies are low. Uh, student fees and uh, houses and food are very cheap. But that's what people do normally when they study. And that makes sense to me now that a lot of people who have studied in uh, Poland have moved to, to Germany or to France or to uh, Scandinavian countries or for that matter, UK, because the wages are higher. And uh, if, they, if they stay in Europe, uh, for example, in Germany, and uh, if they go France or Scandinavian countries, including uh, Finland, Norway, and Sweden, uh, uh, they get far more paid. And, uh, and then also they can uh, travel across. And that also brings to me uh, an answer to the question, why my friend, uh, Sam, uh, who is actually from South Africa, uh, who is now married to uh, someone from uh, Poland, um, lives in Poland, but works in Germany uh, because uh, you can travel across uh, and there's no one to stop you. Nobody to even ask you a question who and where and why you're traveling as long as uh, you have uh, the right documents. Uh, I have traveled to Europe yeah. many times by car and uh, I have never been stopped uh, anywhere. Nobody, uh, yes, you will only notice uh, if you notice a, a board sign on the corner of the road that you're entering Belgium or you're entering Germany or entering this. And you will see a little bit of uh, changes in terms of uh, the way the roads are built or uh, cities are built. You can see gradual changes. Otherwise, uh, traveling from one part of Europe to another part of Europe, which is uh, bigger than India, actually, to tell you the fact, slightly bigger than India. Uh, you're traveling across and uh, uh, that's how it is. So I think uh, it's a very good session, Monica. You have, have, have been able to answer a lot of questions. Yeah, I can add something more. When um, I was applying for a job in England, for example, I had to only translate my certificate from uh, school. And that's all I had to do. So there was no problems with uh, my uh, university diploma. And to encourage you more um, to study in Poland, you can work part-time in Poland as well. So you can get extra money, money in uh, hotels or in uh, restaurants. Uh, students work and they earn extra money. You can have uh, 20 hours per week uh, to work in Poland and to get something extra. That's very nice. Very, very nice. As a matter of fact, uh, the same thing happened in UK uh, going back many, many years ago. And uh, then the thing was reduced down to 20 hours, then it reduced down to 10 hours and then stopped. And then it's been reintroduced because when students come from whichever part, uh, apart from the fees which is paid uh, uh, through resources back from their own resources or parental support or taking loan from the banks, uh, and then uh, food, but then they always want a little bit extra. And uh, not that the seven days a week they're studying, they study five days. Sometimes they have a, a morning session. Sometimes they do online lessons also. So they have a bit of time and extra bit of work always helps them to integrate with the society. Uh, people are very friendly. They're very good people. Uh, people feel at home. And uh, a lot of times uh, it's how good one behaves uh, in this part of the world is... Uh, now that's all matters. So if you're good to people, uh, they're good to you. And that's how it works. So they're very receptive. They're very welcoming. Uh, they like people to come. And uh, people find it at ease uh, very soon. And we hardly see people who come to this part of the world uh, going back. 
unless until there are other reasons, uh, because uh, the lifestyles are uh, slight better than uh, what we have. Uh, the the flexibility, the openness is there. The services and the uh, the help uh, from the local government or the uh, institutions or universities are more. And the worst thing is uh, people feel at home. So that's what makes people come and study in Poland. Uh, Monica, uh, it's been absolutely wonderful uh, to have you here today. And thank you all for being part of the session. Uh, we will stop the session now and uh, uh, we will carry on the, the, uh, the, uh, the carry on the session uh, with the, at 12 o'clock with the next session, which is on nursing uh, uh, recruitment in the UK. Uh, the doctors and everybody will be joining in the next uh, eight minutes time. So uh, thank you all for being here with us and uh, we look forward to meeting you all very soon. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank, thank you, everybody. You, Monica. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.